This is Dr. Michael Tapper reporting again from the Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections, CROI, uh, which is currently going on in Boston, Massachusetts. I have the opportunity now to uh, interview Dr. Julia Marcus, who presented this morning. Dr. Marcus is from Kaiser in Oakland, California, and she presented an important paper this morning about narrowing the gap in the life expectancy of HIV positives versus HIV negatives. Dr. Marcus, would you like to tell us a little bit about the study and the data you presented this morning? Sure. Um, well, what we wanted to do was estimate life expectancy in HIV patients compared to HIV negative patients who all have comprehensive access to care and from, or from within the same healthcare system. And Kaiser Permanente is an ideal place to do that. So we, uh, we had a large cohort of HIV infected and uninfected individuals who were matched on demographic factors. So we knew they were demographically similar. Um, and we estimated life expectancy um, over time from 1996 to 2011. Uh, what we found was a, a really steep increase in life expectancy for HIV patients over the time period. Um, however, there was still a remaining gap at, in recent years. We looked at 2008 to 2011, the most recent calendar era in the study, um, and we saw a 13-year gap between HIV patients and HIV uninfected patients during that time period. So next we asked, okay, what are the factors that are contributing to that gap? Um, so we looked at HIV patients who had been optimally treated. So they started ART, antiretroviral therapy, early with high CD4 counts above 500. And we, we actually saw the gap decline to about eight years. Um, so then we looked even further. And we took that group of optimally treated HIV patients and HIV uninfected subjects, and we stratified them. We looked at patients who had no history of hepatitis B or C infection, no history of smoking, and no history of drug or alcohol abuse, or any of those risk factors. And we chose those risk factors because we know they're modifiable. Um, and what we found is that the, the life expectancy gap actually narrowed even further. Um, it, it narrowed by about one to two years, so we got down to five years in the group that uh, had no history of smoking. That was as much as we could make the gap go away. So our next steps are really to look at, you know, what are the factors that exp are contributing to that remaining five-year gap. And broken down by gender, is, was there a significant difference between men and women? Yeah, we looked um, at life expectancy by gender, by race ethnicity, and by HIV transmission risk factor. Um, we saw significant increases in all subgroups uh, of HIV patients. Um, there were no disparities between women and men, HIV-infected women and men. There were increases in both groups. Women had a slightly higher life expectancy, but it wasn't statistically significant. And overall, I would say the patterns by gender and race ethnicity really reflected the overall, the U.S. population. It's kind of what we see overall. Are you going to go forward? Because obviously longitudinal data from these groups becomes very important. You really want to have a snapshot. Now we have patients who have been on antiretroviral therapy heart therapies, for example, since the advent of protease inhibitors in the mid-1990s, we think our regimens are getting much better. Uh, we still are concerned about side effects. We're still concerned about secondary malignancies that might appear even in the context of HIV disease. And we're obviously worried about mortality, such as cardiovascular mortality, cerebral vascular mortality, uh, and some of the consequences of therapy, such as renal disease that might be a consequence, or bone disease. So this study ended in 2011. Are there plans to continue the study with a newer cohort or with the same cohort to go on for a longer period of time? Yeah, we think it's really important to create a similar cohort. I think not. there aren't a lot of study settings where there's an, an, an internal HIV negative comparison group that has similar access to care or the same access to care as our HIV patients. And so we really want to um, create a similar cohort that we can follow into the future and, and also look at patients who were diagnosed more recently and see if life expectancy is increasing in those patients who are benefiting from recent advances in antiretroviral therapy. And when you speak of access to care, an issue that's come up for many years has been adherence. And did you look to see how well people were following their regimens, how frequently they were coming back for care? Were they getting, for example, uh, measurements of viral load or measurements of CD4 on a routine basis versus those who were getting more intermittent care? Yeah, we didn't. That's an important question. Um, in this study, we really only looked at initiation of antiretroviral therapy. Um, but in prior studies, we have looked at adherence and viral suppression. And actually, we've seen in our Kaiser patients um, lower adherence among black HIV-infected patients. And we think that may be part of what's contributing to that lower, those lower life expectancy estimates in that group. So that's, a, that's still an alarming patient group, because even though they're in a system which provides outstanding long-term care, 
there's still a group of people, a subset of people within that, even within the Kaiser Permanente system, who are not getting optimal care because they're not accessing it or they're not following yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. And that tracks very much to toward minority groups and toward other culturally and socially deprived groups who are not, we haven't really gotten to as, as much as we need to. It's that group that's still, as well as we're doing, the group that's left behind. And I think a lot of our efforts we're hearing at this conference is we have to continue to focus on groups that are left behind with the U.S., not to mention all the uh, groups that around the world who are still to have trouble accessing care in the first place. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Thank you very much. It was a great presentation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.